big smiles. All right, is the mic on? Mic on. Stupid. Ouch! Ah, son of a. Yeah. Just. All right. Small camper. Small space. All right. All right. Get it together. Big smiles. And uh, action. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is our new camper. So if you're familiar with the podcast, then you already know what this project is going to be about. And if you're not, shame on you. You should definitely go check out the podcast. It's We Built a Thing. I do it with my buddy Bruce Ulrich and Drew Fisher of Fisher Shop. So there will be links to that. Go see it right now. Hear it right now. It's not video. Uh, anyway, back to the point. This camper was actually given to me by my friend's father and it had been in their family for three generations. They bought it brand new in 1981 and they all used it. Each grandfather, father, and my friend all used it very, very hard and loved it. And they've all kind of moved on and decided it was time to go somewhere else. And it was actually given to me by them um, because they wanted to go to a family that was going to repair it and take care of it. Who better to repair it than me? Um, so, this is going to be a very long, ongoing project. It's going to be a whole bunch of different videos coming together. I have it kind of sorted out to be about 12 total videos start to finish, and that's just an estimate. It might be more, it might be less. But anyway, we're going to take you around the inside and the outside of the camper and show you what it is now and show you what's wrong and explain how I'm going to fix it just to kind of give a baseline for a before and after once the project is finished. So like I said before, this is a 1982 Casita and it has seen a lot of love since it was bought brand new. Um, the first thing we really need to sort out with it is to get it waterproof again. You see every one of these rivets that goes through here is holding the furniture on the interior together. Uh, this thing's construction is just one big fiberglass shell and the rivets through the side are what give it structure to have cabinets and benches and stuff on the inside. And every one of these rivets over the last almost 40 years has started to leak water. So as it rains, water just runs in every one of these holes. The gasket on the door is kind of shot and the door doesn't fit flat anymore. Now the very first thing that I did was clear everything out of here. There was 40 years worth of old camping equipment and canned food and stuff hidden in here. And it was just kind of all rusty and rotten and moldy. Uh, I wanted to get it cleaned out and nice enough to take my family on a camping trip, which we did. So some of the work has kind of been done in that it's cleaned out, it was nice. It was dry was the huge thing. After getting it cleaned out, I put a tarp over this and stored it under a tarp until we went camping and it worked perfectly. After that camping trip, I, took, I didn't put the tarp back on it and now there's standing water inside it again. So that water leak is a huge problem that we're gonna have to tackle right away. One of the big upgrades that I wanna do is install a bit of suspension and a lift kit into this thing. As you can see, it's very low to the ground and it's very rigid across the axle and when you hit bumps in the road, this thing actually takes flight and comes off the ground. So I like to go camping way back into the middle of nowhere and with this thing being as low as it does, it kind of tends to drag and bounce off of bumps and stuff. So what we're going to do is lift the whole body off of the frame and put in a lift kit and a suspension kit. That way it gets higher off the ground and it'll soak up those bumps a little better as it goes down the road. So here's an example of why I need to add the suspension to this thing. If you look real close here, you can see that the frame has actually caved in around the fiberglass body here on both sides. And my buddy actually admitted to that being him at a specific incident. He was driving and didn't see a cattle guard in the middle of the highway, so he was doing 65 and jumped this thing over the cattle guard. And when it came back down, it sort of crushed that fiberglass body. So that's really the main reason why we have to take the whole shell off so that we can fix the fiberglass down here and get the, the shell lifted up and sitting flat on the frame again. Now while we have the shell off of the frame, I'm also going to tie in a receiver hitch that's going to come out from behind this bumper and that way I can put on uh, little toy haulers, bicycle racks, things like that so I can actually store more stuff hanging off the back of this to travel with. Um, you can see here this is where the spare tire used to mount and it got broken off 
the stud that held it got broken off out of the fiberglass here, so I'm going to fix that too. Now we're also going to have to repair or replace most, if not all, of the windows because the gaskets have all just dried out, and again, the seal around it is just shot from 40 years of sitting in the sun. Here you can even see I tried to keep more water out by taping the seam in the middle because it's just completely separated. Um, I have not had luck finding good replacement windows yet, which is the route I'd like to go. I'm afraid I'm just going to have to fix these, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. Down here, this is where a long power cord comes out, so you, when you're dry docking, which is when you're at a uh, campground or you have somewhere where you can actually plug into power, a big long extension cord comes out and provides power to this thing. Um, that was actually just a big open hole and so rain was just constantly going into that too. So you can see I just taped that off so that it didn't get more water in it. So once we get all of the exterior repairs done, we still have the issue of old faded looking fiberglass and an old logo. Uh, it crossed my mind to try to come up with a really cool new paint scheme design, whatever, but anything other than white is just going to start soaking up a little bit more heat. and. I kind of like the idea of putting it back to classic factory new. So this logo is actually painted on here. I don't believe that this is a sticker. So we're probably going to just take and do a rub on it and get a stencil for ourselves to come back and hand paint that logo back on later. Once we have that stencil made for ourselves, we're going to wet sand the entire body and clean all the dirt and grime and just years and years of sadness off the side of it and then come back and paint it with a gel coat of white to make it bright white and new again. And a couple of light fixtures will have to get replaced. You can see all the way around that these edge uh, lights are, are a little busted up and rotten. Um, but that's kind of the exterior. Let's take a look inside. Now before we step inside, I want to tell you about the floor a little bit. Uh, I already did a little bit of work on it because it was so rotten when we got it that I was afraid uh, we were going to cause a little bit of damage in that first camping trip. The plywood subfloor had all rotted away and it was just exposed fiberglass for about the first eight or ten inches of floor and I was sure that one of my kids would just step over that threshold and punch right through and injure themselves and hurt the camper and so this is a temporary fix that we'll deal with later but let's go inside and check it out. So over here is the dining room slash bedroom. We've got a little bit of storage up high, but mostly we have the two benches around the table and then there's storage underneath the benches. Actually underneath that side, there is a 30 gallon water tank that comes around here over to the sink. Um, when it's time to go to bed, you can just drop this tabletop into channels right here in the edge of the bench. And then you fold the cushions down or you take the side cushions down and put them on top of the table and you have yourself, it's technically about a full size bed with three or four inch foam. So it's actually pretty cozy. That couple of nights we spent in here, it was real easy sleeping. Um, I, I claim the outside part of the bed because as you see the way this thing curves, it's a little bit shorter next to the side than it is out in the middle. Um, the other thing you probably have been asking yourself from the second you saw this clip, is why is there carpet everywhere? All this carpet is rotten and nasty and covered in dust. Despite my best efforts to vacuum it out and clean it, it's just old and needs to be replaced. But the thing about it is, it's actually foam backed carpet, so it insulates this thing really well. Without it, it would just be a hard fiberglass shell. Um, so it cuts down on some sound and it increases the insulation quality. So I don't know how we're going to replace that yet, because this is all very custom cut, very fitted carpet. I think the plan would be to buy like those 12 inch foam carpet tiles and stick them all up individually when we put it back together. But it's going to be a much lighter color. We want it to be bright and nice in here and not kind of dark and, and 70s, 80s looking stuff. So here we have the kitchen. We have a uh, old stove that I found all the parts for, but it no longer works and I don't want to assemble it. So we are going to buy a new one to fit back into this place. Here's a sink and the sink actually works all right. It, uh, I might swap it out for an electric pump so that you can just turn the tap on and off. But right now it's just a hand pump and you do this enough times and water starts to come back out. Little bit of weird storage underneath it. You can actually see the wheel well is underneath there. Um, so there's not a lot of great space, but this thing is low on storage, so it's nice to have every bit you can. Down here we have a built-in fridge. 
and we've kind of decided we don't think we need it. It's small enough, what we need is storage, so I think this is going to go and we're going to replace it with a bank of drawers. Then we can keep all of our cooking utensils and silverware and that kind of thing right here where we want it. Now one thing that we'd really like to add to this is a heater. It doesn't have any heat source in it yet other than the stove, but there's big warning letters that say don't use the stove to actually make heat. Um, so we can have a heater that exhausts to the outside but still ties into the same propane tank that'll mount to the tongue on the front. Uh, those are pretty simple to use. It's just a matter of a hose and a wire and it's pretty much ready to go. The lighting in here is pretty much non-existent. There's a little light on either side of the upper cabinet here and they don't seem to work. And there's a little fluorescent light above the sink that also doesn't seem to work even when that big long extension cord is plugged in. So I'm planning on putting in new LEDs in here and I'm not sure how yet, but I was thinking about running them kind of up and over the top through the middle to just have maximum light going in every direction instead of these silly little guys that just kind of have light in a corner. That's all stuff that still needs to be decided. Now this bench I'm sitting on is actually a bunk bed which is really handy. Uh, for full grown people it's not a lot of space the way it is. I mean you can make it work if you're any taller than me you're gonna struggle with it. But for our young kids it works really, really well. When my wife and I slept in the bed, my kids were over here. All you have to do, there's two of these, but you grab the kickstand, move the cushion out of the way, pull the back up, put the kickstand in. If you can find the peg, there's a peg here. Kickstand in, boop, and then you put your cushion back. And just like that, you can sleep two young children over here really well. And they were super excited about it. So that was great. And then the other thing I quickly built, just to make sure that they felt comfortable, with the double kickstand in here, there's really no way of rolling off the bottom. But off the top, I gave them a little bit of a fence. Again, this would stick into that other kickstand. But this worked out so well to have the boys over here, my wife and I over there and I didn't have to set up a tent to do it. Pull into the campground, unhook the truck, you're already done. Now, even though this thing is pretty tiny, there are actually a lot of storage options already built into it. You've got a full height closet over here, which is just kind of empty space. There's a little bit of a coat rack up there so you can hang things, but I'm thinking we'll put in shelves or drawers or something in here. The bottom is hard to use space because the wheel well is down there. Above the kitchen, we've got a big cabinet up here that actually, the one time we took this out, we had all of our cooking stuff, pots and pans and even some food and plates and all of it managed to fit up there. Uh, we didn't even tap into the space up above the bed table, but there's lots of room up there to store different things. And then underneath all of the benches, there's big, kind of like you'd find in a boat where you lift the hatch off and there's just a cubby underneath it so you've got space here but it's taken up with the uh, water tank you've got space over here that also has the electrical cord running into it and then you've got space underneath the bunk bed bench uh, where we can put a lot of different stuff so the only storage we're really adding is getting rid of the fridge and adding in some drawers there so it's a small space but it's got everything we need we've proven that the size is good enough for what we need it to do. So I am really getting excited to tear into this. We're gonna take the shell off the frame. I'm going to drill out every one of the rivets that go to the outside and take out every single one of these fixtures so I can do the floor brand new from scratch. Painting every one of these fixtures again, just so that it's nice and new and clean. Then we'll have to make new cabinetry for all this stuff, replace the hinges, replace the doors with none other than walnut, of course. It's getting hot in here, guys. The sun's getting up and it's starting to cook. So I'm getting sweaty and winded. I can't really think of anything else I need to say about this other than I'm really looking forward to it and it's all I want to work on. So I think that's the next plan. I'm going to wrap this one up and tell you guys we will see you next time. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I will roll out videos as we get them done. So. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this one and we'll see you next time.